Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly menu cook along. So I'm shortly about to get cooking the 10 dishes on this week's menu. Remember, get all your little bits of each dishes together, all the components, they're colour coded, they're labelled, so really, really simple. Let's have some good fun with it. It's nice and easy to put together and hopefully you'll have a great time and enjoy your Yubi Chef meal. First course for you is our weekly bake as usual. This week is, is our own seeded sourdough. So a little uh, sourdough with lovely seeds on top. I'll just show you before it goes in the oven. All in there like so. We've got pumpkin seeds, poppy seeds on the top. Smelling absolutely delicious. So that can all go into the oven. Remember the labels are all paper based as well so they can go in as well. We'll find 10 to 12 minutes that's going in for. Let's get that in. So once that's in, we've sent you your butter. So this is a whipped dill butter. All we need to do, just unwrap it from a little Yubi Chef paper. Just peel that sticker off there. And now I've got a little dish here ready to put the butter on. And the reason I'm doing this now, I want it to soften up at room temperature, ideally quarter of an hour or so before you're gonna eat it. And then it'll be nice and softened up, ready to spread onto your sourdough. So I'm just gonna get a little palette knife, like so. Little knife, I'm gonna neaten up my edges. I'm not gonna waste that, I'm gonna use that with a trim. A little bit of salt, just on the top. Now again, that's completely up to you, but I do like a little bit of extra mold and salt on there. That's my dill butter, all ready to soften up. If you wanted to get a nice little shine on it, see I've just got the grill just going here, just pass it literally under the grill, very briefly, and then you get that lovely shine on the top. That's all ready to go. We'll be back in 10 to 12 minutes where we'll get our weekly bait all sliced and plated up. So just unwrapping my little seedy dough now. So I have to start with, I'll just move that pot tray out the oven, get rid of that, and then there you go. So you've got all the seeds on the top, serrated knife, really, really important. Just slice away, watch your fingers. Just going to slice it into some nice big chunks for you to put on my little bit of barley that I've got over here. And then it's going to be all ready to serve with our softened butter. So you can even see, see how we've got the seeds all going through the dough itself. So onto our bit, bit of barley. Seeds, they can go out for the birds or you can nibble on them, up to you. That is our first course, the weekly bake, to get you started. Up next we've got a risotto nero few. So in here you've got your risotto rice, a little bit of parmesan, a little bit of butter. This is coloured jet black because we use cuttlefish ink in there. So it's got a wonderful flavour to it and really, really eye-catching. This, as usual, we send you with a risotto cooking liquor, sorry. So carefully cut that open and then you need all of the liquor into the pan and then get it onto the heat. I've got my little spatula here. So just onto a medium heat, there it goes. And I'm going to bring it up to the simmer. Keep stirring it occasionally. You don't need to keep on stirring it constantly, but keep it so it's not going to stick. And then once it's up to the heat, about four to five minutes, just until it's all nicely and rich, but you don't want it dried out and stodgy, so take it off beforehand. Uh, garnishes, we've got a bit of cuttlefish just there. So really nice pieces of cuttlefish, all coloured, uh, lovely golden. A little bit of charred lemon, which um, sort of adds a new dimension to the lemon juice. It kind of sweetens up nicely. I'm going to put both of those in the oven for four to five minutes. So in there you go, keep an eye on my risotto so that's just starting to heat up there. And then when we come to serve it, I've got my red pepper and rocket salsa, just some chopped rocket in there. That's coming up to room temperature, and then we're going to open that up and just dress it over the top of the risotto. Really, really simple, bang in flavour, back in about four minutes. So, out comes the lemon and the cuttlefish. The beauty of these containers is because they're just biocane, they don't, they're not like um, the metal where you really burn yourself with so you can just grab them. So, pot plate there, that's all ready for risotto. And this is just coming up, been on about four and a half minutes now, just giving it a nice stir, last part of the cooking. You can see there, look at the texture. See how it's nice and, starts to get nice and creamy. It literally needs another 10 seconds before we'll be ready to go. So, there we go, let's turn the heat off there. So that's all good. Let's get my little bit of salsa opened up. So I'm just going to open that up there. I'm going to get a little dish. 
I'm just going to pour my nice bit of red pepper sauce, that's got all that lovely rocket in there, rapeseed oil, to get it all out. Really, really easy with these compostable vac vacuum pack bags. So, there you go. Right, let's plate it up. Let's get all, all of our jet black, look at that. Stunning colour. All of that into the centre. And then let's just tamp it out with that spatula or a spoon, whichever you're serving up. Get it nice and even. So now you're ready to go. There we go, lovely. Take a spoon. Then we're going to put, first of all, our charred lemon just on the side. And then let's get a little bit of cuttlefish in there. So we've got our, first of all, little tentacles all charred off. I'm going to put a nice big spoon of salsa just there. Now I'm going to take a little bit more just for that really eye catching extra bit of colour. Get all the juice happening as well. There you go. Back to our cuttlefish. A few more pieces. And there you go. Look at that. Let's do that, just to rearrange that slightly so it's standing up, a bit of height. Lovely. So that is our starter, risotto nero, sauté cuttlefish, red pepper, rocket, charred lemon. So we've got a tenderloin of pork schnitzel right now for you. Now normally schnitzel is like a nice big piece of battered out pork or, or veal, uh, but what I've done for you, you've got these lovely little pucks, and this is cut from the pork tenderloin, which we brought uh, brined as well, so absolutely banging taste in there. They're all in the breadcrumbs. Take the lid off of them. Little tip, tiny bit of grapeseed oil just on the top. They're gonna go in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes. And then you've got your fine beans just in here, like so. Remember, all, the, all of these lids can go in the oven, microwave, they're absolutely brilliant. And at the end, you can put them in the bin, they're gonna compost away, no problem at all. So, Lid is staying on that, and that's going to help it just steam inside the oven. Eight to ten minutes, let's get those in. Remember, nearly every recipe it's 190 degrees for the oven temperatures. Sometimes they vary, but really, really simple, so you don't have to keep on adjusting the oven temperature. Then, in here, this is our garnish. So, I've got a lovely little selection of uh, little blanched lemon peel, caper berries, capers, shallots, and then this. In here is my parsley and lemon butter. So what you want to do with your parsley and lemon butter, put that into your saucepan, add a tablespoon of water approximately per portion of butter, and then that's going to go onto the stove. So we get that on, and then going to bring that up to the heat, just going to swirl it around in the pan to emulsify it with the water, and then I'm just at the end, I'm going to add my capers, lemon, all of those ingredients into it, give it another little swirl, 30 seconds, take it off the heat, it's ready to go, and then we'll be back to plate all our pork, schnitzel, and our fine beans. So, just adding my nice bit of lemon, capers, caper berries to my sauce, just whilst that's finishing off, plate out. You can see I've got my schnitzels in there, tiny bit of salt in there, again, you don't have to, completely up to personal taste, and then there's my fine beans, all heated up, lovely. So, back, just come back up to the simmer, Look at that, it's a real classic sauce to go with this. Give it a nice turnover. Got that parsley, lemon, absolutely beautiful. So, simple presentation. Just get those beans. Just kind of just let them fall onto the plate. Like so. Maybe one more on there. There we go. And then I'm gonna get my schnitzels. I'm just gonna place some all the way around. Like so, and then let's get our uh, capers, caper berries, and you want a good bit on here, okay? You don't want to be sort of stingy with this sauce. It, all of the sauce will kind of go great with the crispy breadcrumbs. So plenty of that. Spread out capers all over different bits and bobs, nice and evenly. And then at the end, I'm just gonna get a bit of sauce, 
just go around the outside. There you go. Really slight rearrange there, make it all look nice and nice and even. And then just with those beams, all I'm gonna do is so you just split them just with my finger in there so it just pops open. Again, you don't have to do that, but just has a lovely little look to the top of those split beams. And there you go. So that is, again, one of my favorites, crispy pork tenderloin in there, fine beans and that wonderful caper butter sauce. My vegetarian course on the UB Chef menu this week is a mushroom bavoir. So this is a chestnut mushroom, mushroom bavoir set in here. On the top we've got a really lovely uh, Madeira jelly, so a little Madeira kind of mirror just set on the top. We've got some watercress in there, just some fresh, really nice peppery watercress. Just take a little piece of paper off of that. And then in here I've got a nice little mushroom salsa uh, for you. So what you need to do, just uh, cut that open and we're going to squeeze that into a pan. I've also got mushroom crackers. so. Instead of like a nice piece of grilled bread with this, we're gonna have some nice mushroom crackers to serve with it. They're already in the oven, so I put them in about a minute ago, a minute, two minutes, and they're just heating up very, very quickly. So I'll also give that a nice little stir, like so. Got my serving plate. And then what I'm gonna do is just take a nice big spoon of that, first of all, like so. Ideally have two spoons the same. And then what I'm going to do is make a nice quenelle, chefy quenelle, which will sit on top of our bavoir. There we go. So, a little clean. Then we're going to take some of our watercress little leaves and just start resting them just around the dish. We want them to come out a little bit out the side. Whilst we're doing this, we're going to grab our crackers out so they don't over, overdo. There they come. See that wonderful mushroom crackers behind the camera, James, just described that these look like a lovely uh, autumn leaves. So it's a really like lovely autumnal looking dish. And you'll see when we plate this up in a second. Tiny bit extra mold and I'm gonna put on there. A little bit of rapeseed oil. Let's get back to our watercress. And we're just gonna keep on adding. You don't need to use all of it, just as much as you kind of want for the presentation. Remember that's where you're the chef, but what I would say is try and make sure you can see that Madeira jelly underneath it. No, almost done. Just a little token gesture as it, as it is, just a, there it is. I'm really happy with that. Again, tiniest bit of rapeseed on the top. You can see all those lovely little, little droplets of golden oil just sit lovely on there. There we go, let's get that onto our plate. Then the crackers. I'm just gonna, no particular fashion, let's just get them placed onto our side. Look at that. Lovely and autumnal. Super excited about this one. Mushroom crackers ready to dip into that softened up bavoir, salsa on the top, Madeira jelly. Hope you enjoy it. Onto our fish main course now, and again, really, really seasonal. We've got a super piece of bream just under here. It's got a parmesan crust on the top, uh, nice and thin. This is just gonna go in the oven. We've already colored it off, as you can see, into the oven, 10 to 12 minutes. So let's get that out in. There we go. Rest of the garnish. Sprouts. Now, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but like this, I guarantee you'll love them. We've got a little fricassee of sprouts in here. Chestnuts, herbs. Um, we've also got some sprout tops just to go on at the end, touch a bit of uh, butter in there. Make sure you keep the lid on these ones, again they're going to steam nicely in the container. They're going to take about 8-10 to 10 minutes in the oven, just with that lid on the top. Fricassee is literally onto the heat with a spoon, keep stirring it just until it comes up to the simmer. One or two minutes simmering and then just pull it off the side and retain hot until we're ready to serve it. And then in here, look at that lovely little vinaigrette, this is what's going to bring the whole dish together at the end. Just gonna show you this. Pour it into your little pan. Make sure you get all those clams in there. They're pelord clams. That's our dressing. This is just gonna get warmed up very gently on the stove. You don't need to boil it because of course the clams are already cooked. 
warm dressing, fricassee, sprout tops, back in about 10 minutes to plate up. So, all ready to serve up our bream now. There we go, hot plate. Vinaigrette has just warmed up, remember. Only warm, you don't need to kind of boil it or anything because otherwise the clams will overcook. Then let's pull our lid off our sprout tops, so wonderful green sprout tops in there. Very, very carefully lift your bream out, which has all got that nice little crust on. And I've got a spatula ready here to get that onto my plate. Now, fricassee. So it's all been heated up in the sauce. So that lovely herbs, chestnuts, really nice light cream sauce going through it. And what I'm doing here, I'm getting a nice little bed to sit the cream on the top, okay? So just plate it where you can see everything, good amount on there. Happy with that. And then what I'm going to do is get a little bit of sauce from the pan. It's easier, easier to dress this before you put the bream on. So, like so. There we go. Let's get the bream. So, as I said, fish slice. Let's just make sure it's all nicely off that paper. And then lift up. Nice and careful, let's get rid of our paper. And then let's put that onto the top, like so. Just clean down the board, keep nice and tidy. Back to my sprout tops now. With these, you can just kind of like fold them over a little bit, just to add a little bit of that eye-catching green. I'm saying you should always have plenty of green vegetables with your main course, so here we go. A few extras, a few more, and maybe get one more on there. I don't want to kind of completely fill the plate, so you can always serve a few just on the side. Look at that, lovely. Onto our clams. Let's plate the clams first of all. So just scoop them out of a spoon, just for putting them on show nicely. Look at those lovely, plump, juicy clams. Then give it a stir and a tiny bit of that clam dressing again more on the table is all good just to dress it how about that beautiful dish crusted uh, bream parmesan crust all those different sprouts clams chestnuts hope you enjoy Real special main course for you now, again making the most of the seasons. We've got a cannelloni. So this is a little dish that um, was different from this, but I learned this back at Wintering and Fields uh, back in the day with Jermaine Schwab. Um, and this is where we roll out the pasta and we get kind of like different lines of pasta in there so you can get this lovely effect. This one is made from a tarragon pasta and saffron pasta um, in between them. Uh, and in there we've got a pheasant mousse, which is mixed with a lovely little spicy and dungeon sausage in there as well. There's a bit of pancetta, there's herbs, all in there. That's going to go into a pan of simmering water, so just drop it in, in the film, this is eco film around it, and then it wants to be simmering, so even with a lid on or just on the side of the stove, but make sure it's a rolling simmer, 10 to 12 minutes. Take it out, rest it for a couple of minutes before you cut into it. Then, rest of the garnish. So I've got a little ragu, so a creamy kind of sauce of all my vegetables. I've got cannellini beans, squash, cavolo nero, and this is my ragu sauce. This is made with roasted chicken bones and of course some pheasant bones in there as well. And then what I'm gonna do, squeeze all of your ragu sauce into your pan, like so. Get that onto the stove. I'm gonna bring that up to the simmer. Once it's been simmering, get your garnish in and then with a spoon, just turn over the garnish to coat it. And you want it heating for two to three minutes, I'd say, just to get all of this garnish nicely heated up. What we finish it with, crispy cavolo. This is absolutely delicious on the top, really, really nice. One to two minutes in the oven, just to heat it up. Back, uh, once I can load it, I'm gonna show you taking it out of the film, just kind of redoing it, trimming the ends, and then we'll be all ready to plate, plate up this autumnal main course. Almost ready to serve up our pheasant now. There's my ragu, that's all nice and hot. Ooh, hot, hot bowl. Right, let's get our cannelloni out. Okay, I'm just using a little spider to get that out. Slotted spoon, 
just nice and careful. And then what you've got there is your pan loading. Now, so a little tip, you don't have to do this. I've got a little bit of melted butter just in there. Tiniest bit of water. That just emulsifies when you just shake it together. And then what I'm going to do with my cannelloni, cut off the end like so. Remember that's the eco film, so all good to go in the bin if you haven't got compost. And then you see how I'm just going to get my little scissors and then really, really carefully cut up the side of a clean film like so and then just unwrap okay so that can all go in there then I'm going to transfer it to my board and again this is sort of optional you don't have to do this but I'm just going to cut it down so I'm going to cut across cannelloni of course you can eat these ends of each piece but I just want to make it look really really nice so you see there you've got the mousse you've got pancetta going through there and then I'm going to take that cannelloni and I'm just going to sit it into my pan so you see there look roll it in that butter look at that that's what happens you get a beautiful shine so just a little roll you can use a spoon if you prefer to don't burn your fingers and then a little bit of salt just on the top Cannelloni's all ready to go. Then what we'll do, a little clean down, nice and nice and clean. Take your ragu, you want a good bit of this in the bowl. I'm just gonna go for like a sort of circle kind of shape. And first of all, try and drain it as you put it in. I don't have too much sauce because it'll just make it easier for you to plate. You see like so, look at that. This is literally autumn on the plate. This is squash in there, cannellini beans. Lovely bit of cavolo. Like so. Then we're going to do, get some sauce. And just add that around the outside. Plenty of sauce on there. There we go, just pull that out of the way. Boom. Cannelloni, that tarragon pasta, look at that pride of place. Just sit that on the top. We'll keep those little trimmings for later. And all that's left, just some lovely little, bit, little bits of that uh, cavallinero, which we've just crispened up. And again, you don't want to cover it, because then you're going to cover all of that colour of a pasta. So just a few pieces. Just going to break that down a little bit. This cavallo is absolutely beautiful. And there we go, I'm not going to lift that up, it's a little bit delicate. Let's get that to the table straight away. That's your cannelloni and pheasant with that beautiful autumnal ragu underneath. Vegetarian main course for you now. Look at this, a lovely truffle gnocchi. In there you've got shaved truffle on the top of it, you've got some parmesan in there, and then you've got a lovely, uh, lovely amount of uh, truffle gnocchi which that goes through the mix as well. We've got a little bit of butter on the top of there to bake this in. Take the lid off of the gnocchi before you start. And then the rest of the garnishes. Like so, lovely bit of just vegetables in here. We've got some green beans, sprout tops, a little bit of um, sprouting broccoli. And then we've got our artichokes. You've got little baby artichokes all ready to go. And of course you've got some Jerusalem artichokes. You've got two different, completely different flavours there. Bake those with the lids on. That will stop them drying out. All of this, about 12 minutes in the oven. Really simple. Get it open. All in there. That's happening. Then our garnishes. Got a little pan here. Artichoke puree. So this is made with Jerusalem artichokes. This one. So let's just squeeze that all into our pan, like so. There we go. This is just going to go onto the stove uh, just to warm up. Give it a little stir so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And then just to finish, you've got this little nasturtion oil in there. Sometimes it's all about those dressings that just lift the flavour of everything at the end. So I'm going to keep that just out of room temperature. This is going to go on uh, when my uh, knock has been in the oven for a little while. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put it together. Let's go with our knocky now. So I've got my hot plate ready to go. That's my artichoke puree, all warmed up. Right, lid off your veg. You've got your beans, broccoli, you've got your artichokes in there, knocky. And I've got my oil, remember. Let's get puree, first of all. Good bit of puree. And then just with the back of a spoon, what I like to do, 
just there, just spread it out. Use a ladle, that also makes it a little bit easier if you've got that. There you go. So, nice kind of barrier of the um, archic puree right the way around. There we go. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Nice clean spoon. Let's get some of our veg going on. So we've got a nice little selection here. So there's spring greens in there. Got a few fine beans. This is just making a nice little base. We have a gnocchi going to sit on the top, but we want those in pride of place. So that's why I'm going with my green veg, first of all. That's enough of that for me. Then some of your artichokes, Jerusalems, a few nice pieces, which we've roasted. And those baby artichokes. So you just sit them on there like so. Then get into your gnocchi. They've got those lovely little bits of truffle on, all speckled on there. And now we're just gonna build this up. See how that cheese has melted on the top. So plenty of gnocchi on this one. Almost there. Let's get another one just on the top. So, I want to get another piece of artichoke pride of place on the top. There we go. And quick wipe up. Finally, your oil. So this is an nasturtion oil. Cut off a little bit of the corner of the bag. Let's get that out of the way. And then simply finish it off. There you go. That's the oil all kind of on the top. Beautiful. Again, Super seasonal, that's my gnocchi with the truffle artichokes and artichoke puree. On to our caramelised pineapple dessert now. So here I've got my pineapple, lovely syrup around the outside. All you need to do this, like I've done, empty out the sachet, get it onto your heat. Let's get the heat on them there. We're gonna bring that straight to the simmer and then I'm gonna turn it down a little bit and then I'm gonna keep basting it we just want to get it lovely and glazed, lovely and syrupy. So what we've got here then, we've got our pineapple gel, just in a piping bag. So just simply just cut off the end of your piping bag so that you can pipe it out easily. Same with your white chocolate and lime ganache, which is just there. So they're all, um, all out, and I'd have them out of room temperature as well. And then we've got a little banana cake here, we've got golden raisins going through that. Take your chocolate and lime ganache and you'll see what I'm going to do is pipe nice little piles I've just heard my pineapple start to come up so I'm just going to break off see that see how it instantly goes nice and syrupy keep basting now let's get that just turn down a little bit keep base 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 and that's where you'll get that beautiful shiny sticky glaze on the top let's get back to our ganache so I'm keeping on piping, nice little piles of that, want plenty on there, like so, happy with that, maybe one more just on the side, there we go, keep that ganache for later, a bit more of a place, so we're not far off with that now, let's put our nice bit of banana cake on the side, Pineapple gel, and this is lovely and fresh. Gonna cut through that rich roasted pineapple. And of course, we'll have a little bit of sauce from there as well. There we go, that's all those, ready to go. Back to this, getting lovely and syrupy now. Keep it on the heat, keep spooning it over. And you'll find, look at that, see how it gets really sticky. Almost, uh, there we go, heat off. So over we come, turn it over in the pan. So I'm keeping on basting. I want the presentation to start to be that size, so I'm just gonna finish off with one last baste on there. Let it sit slightly. Let's get the spoon under there, slippery little character. 
quick drain and very carefully onto your plate. Be careful of the glaze here because of course it's, it's going to be hot. Tiny bit more on the top, not too much. And then we can add a little bit of extra sauce around the outside. Quick wipe of the dish before we serve up. And that combination of that hot, sticky pineapple, rich white chocolate there, and the lime. You got that lovely little cutting uh, pineapple gel to go with it. Really, really beautiful dessert. We've got a lovely sea buckthorn and orange tart now. So like a lemon tart, but we've put sea buckthorn berries into it. Um, and the buckthorn we forage here on the Isle of Wight. Um, so and it's got fresh oranges going through, lovely sweet pastry on the top. Then you've got your rosemary meringue. So this is a little meringue shell with some lovely little pieces of uh, candied rosemary just stuck into the top of it. Quite a faint taste in here. We've hollowed out the centre and that's so we can pipe it with our yoghurt mousse from here. Take off your corner of your piping bag, like so. I've got my plate ready to go. And I'm just going to hold my meringue up the other way and then just very carefully get hold of your mousse and then you might want to have two people doing this to make it easier. And then just see, I'm just going to pipe that all inside, like so. So that's all in there. And then I'm going to very quickly just get my tart. I'm just going to pop that on the top, like so. There you go, okay? Then what we're going to do, we've got some nice little candied orange peel here. Just take your orange. I'm using a little pair of tweezers. You can use a spoon, whichever you prefer. And then start basically garnishing all the top of that meringue. You'll find you can use a little piece of rosemary to help stick them on. These are beautiful and chewy. It's a little bit of bitterness to them, but only a touch. Just where we blanch, blanch it before we put it in the sugar. But that goes lovely with the uh, sweetness of meringue. Now the buckthorn berries have got a taste similar, or sort of somewhere in between orange and passion fruit. They're quite, uh, quite zippy, so you get quite a hit when you eat it. They're really, really nice for the end of a meal. Just poking a few little pieces in there. Take your time. A few more. This will keep really, really well in the fridge as well if you want to come back and add it to one of your other desserts at a later stage. Right, almost there. And then we're just going to get a fish slice and add this to our plate. Happy with that. Fish slice, as I said, make it nice and easy. Let's lift that on. And there we go. A lovely tart sea buck for an orange with that beautiful rosemary meringue. Onto our cheese course now, we've got a little bit of a different one, it's not our sort of usual cheese tasting. This is a lightly set goat's cheese cream, just inside this lovely little glass dish. So green barn goat's cheese, that's local to us on the Isle of Wight. And then we've set a layer of quince jelly just on the, on the top of it. Keep that out about 15 minutes before you're going to serve it. And meanwhile, I'm going to get my fennel seed crackers, just going to get them into the oven. One to two minutes, that's all we're going to take. So this has been out obviously just warming up and then you're going to taste the flavours even better. Get a bit of rapeseed oil into your red chicory. And again this has got bitterness and um, some people like it, some people don't. But I love it especially with that like nice rich goat's cheese flavour and the quince. So that's all in there ready to go. And then cut open your little bag of apple tricks. And in here we've got little baby crab apples. And we've got some compressed apple in there. See how it goes lovely and green when we just prepare that. So they're all ready to go. What I'm going to do, just start kind of just press them in lightly, that chicory. And I'm going to kind of put that around one side. So I've got a nice piece of chicory there, a little bit laying down. And then let's get some of my pieces of compressed apple on there 
and they're lovely and crunchy. Of course, that beautiful acidity. And then we've got our little poached crab apples. They can all go in. Build a little bit more garnish in there, like so. Okay, all happy with that. Then we're gonna get a plate. Let's get that just onto the side. Then let's get our fancy crackers out. Here they come, and you'll smell that, that beautiful fennel seed aroma coming off of them. I've got a little bendy fork just sat on the side. And I'm gonna get these stacked up a little bit in there, like so. And it all comes together. Beautiful these are for dipping into that mousse. And there we go. That's my cheese course for this week. Lightly set goat cheese cream, red chicory, poached and compressed apple, found seed crackers. There we go, back is UV Chef for another week. We did our weekly bake, free starts, mains and desserts, and of course for cheese. I hope whichever dishes you've ordered, you have a great time cooking them, and of course I hope you love the dishes. Uh, next week's menu is all online. There's Christmas, New Year, we've got loads happening. Even Valentine's will be on, online soon to order. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a look at next week's menus, get ordering. Hope you have a great week and thanks for ordering UV Chef.